a mother-daughter bond between Joan and Melissa Rivers. Today, Melissa gave us an update on Joan's condition, saying, quote, my mother has been moved out of intensive care and into a private room where she is being kept comfortable. And we also know through a source that Joan is showing some signs of brain function, which is great news to hear. And I can only imagine, you know, how hard this has been on Melissa, how difficult, but she has always been there for her mother through even the most trying times. And in tonight's big picture, a daughter's courage. People expect me to be my mother. And I guess in a lot of ways I am, but people expect my mother to be the same person they see on TV and she's at home. My, you know, my friends meet her for the first time and it's like, wow, she's nothing like that. Yeah, she's normal. This was the very first time we sat down with Joan and Melissa. It was 1988. Just nine months earlier, Edgar Rosenberg, Joan's husband and Melissa's father, had ended his own life with an overdose of prescription pills. We've had a very, very rough two years, and it's brought us, uh, I think, very close together. Um, it also almost ripped us apart. Uh, when there's a suicide in the family, um, it does terrible things to the survivors. But if you do live through it, you come out much closer. And I think we're on our way to really being close now because of these horrors we've gone through. Melissa, the love of Joan's life, was born in 1968 when Joan was 34 years old. Over the years, E.T. spent a lot of time with the famous mother and daughter. You be good and you study hard, all right? I promise. In 1994, we were on the set when the two played themselves in the TV movie, Tears and Laughter, the Joan and Melissa Rivers story. We're finally able to state our point of view. I don't know if it's necessarily saying the record straight, but it's our version of what we went through. Melissa, just tell me what's happened. They relived Edgar's suicide in the film, and there's a scene where Joan visited his casket at the funeral home. Just tell me why. Joan overcame her grief by throwing herself into her work. Moving on, not facing anything, not facing a, I had no husband, not wasn't facing it, just going. As the years progressed, they healed together and became a team. And just this past Mother's Day, they invited us along to go shopping at the 99-cent store. We're passing the prune juice, don't even make a joke. Melissa, what? look over there. They were like two girlfriends having a blast. I love you, Mom. I love you. Happy, mo Happy Mother's Day. When Melissa became a mother herself to son Cooper, Joan was in awe of her daughter. I think she's a much firmer mother than I was. I think she's much more patient than I was. I watched her put decals on some stupid helmet. She's terrific, and the patience is extraordinary. Having survived tragedy, Joan and Melissa always hold each other up, and only Melissa knows the woman the public so rarely gets to see. She's actually very sensitive and nice and sweet. I've been told. What is the best parenting advice you think I ever gave you? Uh, the best parenting advice you ever gave me is the same as the best life advice you Which ever is? gave me. This too shall pass. Mm -hmm.